goodness. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Tisha here, back with another segment of It's Getting Real. Go ahead and do me a favor and hit the like button. This one is going to be raw because I have absolutely no notes. And the little bit of information is based on a conversation that I had with my mother 10 minutes ago. In regards to this, all I did was type it in on my Mac. And here I am now in front of you all because I'm to the point now where I just don't know how to feel about these type of events. So I'll include the articles where I got this information from, where I'm reading directly from. It says, students at Georgia High School describe haunting moment after suspect opened fire. After gunshots rang out in a hallway of Appalachia High School, students said they hid in classrooms for about 30 minutes, relying on active shooter drills that they were trained in. Um, I believe it's Winder, it could be Winder, W-I-N-D-E-R, Georgia. Sophomore Cameron Leroy was in class Wednesday morning when an unfamiliar voice pulsated from the hallway just after 10 a.m. When it didn't stop, his teacher at his high school took action. He ordered students to crouch down in the corners of the classroom. He turned off the lights, locked the door, and propped up a large touchscreen board to block the entrance. That teacher saved lives that day. Understand the fact that that was done to make it look like that class wasn't occupied was a life-saving thing. For 30 terrifying minutes, the students hid motionless, and Leroy prayed for safety as the barrage of gunfire was eventually replaced by emergency sirens and the shouts of police officers. It was very hunting. It was a very hunting moment for everyone, he said. He's 15 years old on NBC News Now. Once home, he said that he was still in a state of shock, but the chaotic events suck in when he learned one of those killed was his geometry teacher and assistant football coach, Richard Aspinwall. A 14 year old student is suspected, 14, of fatally shooting two teachers and two students and wounding one teacher and eight other students before he surrendered to two school resource officers, authorities said. Investigators are working to establish a motive for why the suspect who was charged with the four counts of felony murder as an adult allegedly carried out the attack at the high school, whose students are now the latest to confront how seemingly random gun violence can shatter their small community and how years spent practicing active shooter drills in school turn into a harrowing lesson of survival. Never, Leroy said, or is it, I don't know if it's Leroy said, of thinking that the active shooter trainings would be applied in a real life scenario. Even when it happened, we were prepared, but it's not something you're gonna expect in a normal day of school. You guys take into a, a account that a lot of these kids are just now going back to school. Now I know they go back earlier in Georgia, but they've probably been in school for a couple of weeks. And a couple weeks into the year, all these lives are now changed because of this little tyrant that decided to run around the school aiming fire at people. He added, you think you're going to go to school for seven hours, learn, come home to your family. That's so true. Law enforcement officials said they began receiving calls about an active shooter at around 10.20 a.m. at the high school located in the rural town of about 19,000 people between Atlanta and Athens. A lockdown was in place and parents were told to avoid the school until the scene could be secured. Isaiah Hooks, 15, said he was in science class with about 20 students when the shooting occurred. He could hear screams and the class mobilized to an area that connected to another classroom where they could shelter in place. He would later learn that one of the victims was a classmate and another was Aspinwall, his defensive coach on the school football team. Some of us are still pretty shaken up. I bet it just happened. This thing just happened and these babies are already having to do interviews and talk about their feelings and stuff like that. When at this point, they can't even begin to fathom what's going to come. I've been around gunfire before. 
and it's not something that leaves you. Their life is forever changed. Hook said Thursday, it's going to take a while for us to get over all of this. Jaden Hunter, 17, said he was on the computer and engineering class when the computer showed an alert that the school was on lockdown. Screams were coming from down the hall. At first, he said he didn't know if it was a surprise drill, but his teacher told the class to go hide and get into a safe place. His classmates pulled out their phones to text their friends. Hunter said a friend closer to the shooting wrote him, there was blood everywhere. At a news conference Wednesday, Barrow, or is it Barrow? Barrow County Sheriff Judd Smith said, teachers at the school for the past week have had access to new type of technology that allows them to press a button on their IDs to alert law enforcement of a possible active shooter. That is amazing technology. That should be something that's implemented everywhere. Smith said that it was utilized in this case. In the aftermath of the shooting, the Northeast Georgia Health System said it not only treated physical injuries, but also multiple people with symptoms of panic attacks and anxiety. School was canceled for the rest of the week and grief counselors were being made available. Ariel Bowling was about to leave her classroom with a friend to go to a vending machine when the shooting began nearby. The pair raced back inside the classroom. Panicked, Bowling said she called her mother, who told her not to joke about an active shooter, but quickly realized her daughter was serious. Tabitha Bowling said she told her daughter to hide in the corner and listen to directions. At the time, I heard five gunshots and then the phone went dead. Oh my goodness. I can only imagine the fear that went on with the mother realizing that, number one, her daughter isn't playing, and that, two, She's hearing it and the phone goes dead. At the time I heard the five gunshots and then the phone went dead, Tabitha Bowling recounting the events with her daughter on NBC's Today Show said Thursday. She added, I was very scared. Eventually, after an all clear was given, Ariel Bowling exited the classroom and walked past a body covered with a sheet and someone with a gunshot wound to her leg. Frantic parents were able to reconnect with their children in the school's football field. It just makes me think about the parents that weren't able to. A day after the shooting, Ariel Bowling says she is traumatized and told her mom that she is too scared to return to school. This is going to be a thing, you guys. This isn't something that a couple days out of school is going to cure. This is going to forever change some of those kids. Like post-traumatic stress is real and anxiety and all those other things. It's going to be something that affects a lot of them. Some students at the high school have expressed the need for more security measures. You're basically never safe anywhere, Bowling said. And no matter if the cops are in the school or not, there's still no safety at all. That's a scary feeling. Okay, let me see what this other article says because I think this one gave us some other details. Um, basically letting us know that the father of the shooter... had purchased guns as a holiday present. I, I'm not going to come down on people for the whole gun situation. To each his own. I do not have any weapons. My man has several. I've gotten to the point where I've said that I may want one for safety measures. And if so, I'm going to go to training classes and all those other things to make sure that I'm probably you know, properly trained in it. But even with that, I get nervous about it. So there's no judgment on that as far as I'm concerned. But when certain things are going on with your child or with your, your, in your household, and you know that a weapon could be of risk, I think you need to think twice about having it. So... Uh, the father of the mass shooting suspect accused of killing four people at the high school in Georgia told investigators this week he had purchased the gun used in the killings as a holiday present for his son in December 2023. According to law enforcement sources with direct knowledge of the investigation, 
Colt Gray, a 14-year-old student, is the one who's accused of unaliving two students and two teachers with an AR-style rifle in Wednesday shooting. Nine more people were hospitalized. One source told CNN that the AR-15-style rifle was purchased at a local gun store as a Christmas present. The timeline the teen's father, Colin Gray, provided to authorities would put the gun purchased months after authorities first contacted Gray and his family to investigate school shooting threats that were made online. So the young man who's accused of doing the shooting, they're saying accused, he did it. For the young man who did this, he was already making threats online that he was going to do this and they did not take it seriously. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office in Georgia closed that investigation because the tip about the threat could not be substantiated. So they were said that he was making it, but I guess they couldn't. I mean, there was no proof that he had access. I don't know what that it couldn't be substantiated means. Does it mean that it was idle? Does it mean that you couldn't link it to him? Does it mean that, oh, people said he said it, but you couldn't, you know, determine whether I don't I don't get what that means. CNN has made several attempts to reach Colin Gray by phone and in person at the family home. Wednesday's mass shooting, which happened just weeks into the new school year, was the 45th school shooting so far this year. What? You guys, we're on 45 for this year? The 45th school shooting so far this year and the deadliest U.S. school shooting since the March 2023 mass massacre at the Covenant School in Nashville that left six people dead. Woo. While another community grieves another senseless school shooting, investigators are revealing more details about the case. Here is what they know. The teen suspect left his Algebra 1 class around 9.45 a.m. His classmate told CNN, the classroom doors lock automatically and near the end of class, the suspect knocked on the door to try and come back in. Another student went to open the door but apparently saw the gun and refused to let him in. That diversion may have saved her life. Wow. I think he wanted to come to us first, she said. Instead, the shooter turned to a nearby classroom and opened fire. And you heard about 10 to 15 rounds back to back. The first report of the active shooter came around 1020. Two school resource officers and other law enforcement quickly arrived. Georgia Bureau of Investigations Director Chris Hosey said, I heard gunshots outside my classroom and people screaming, people begging not to get shot, said the 14-year-old student Macy Wright. And then people sitting beside me, we were just shaking and crying. One of the school resource officers confronted the shooter who surrendered and was taken into custody, Borough County Sheriff Judd Smith said. The suspect, hold on, let's say one thing about the um, the resource officer. Kudos to the resource officer because not everybody would confront, not everybody would put themselves at risk like that, even though supposedly that's what they sign up for. The fact that that resource officer did that, that resource officer is a hero as well because he or she saved lives as well by getting the shooter to surrender. The suspect, Colt Gray, is being held Thursday at Gainesville Regional Youth Detention Centers. The Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice told CNN he will make his first point appearance on Friday. Department spokesperson Glenn Allen said, Gray is continuing to cooperate with investigators. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp called the mass shooting everybody's worst nightmare. But it's a nightmare shared by many Americans across the country. Y'all, we got to do something about these gun laws. Like, seriously, we have to do something about these gun laws. I don't feel like you should be able to give a, a gift like that to um, 
a child because that's what this little boy was at 14 and some of you all may disagree with me but I don't feel like you should give that gift to a child I feel like that is a situation that should require more I feel like people having weapons period you should have certain psychological evaluations done and things of that nature because it's it's getting too easy for these things to be put in the wrong hands so far this year, the United States has suffered at least 385 mass shootings, according to the Gun Violence Archive. That's more than what I just read, which defines mass shooting as those in which four or more victims are shot. That's an average of more than 1.5 mass shootings every day. Beloved teachers and students were killed. Two 14-year-old students, Christian Anguelo and Mason Cher Marhorn, S-C-H-E-R-M-E-R-H-O-R-N, went to school and never came home. The shooter also killed 53-year-old math teacher Christina and 39-year-old math teacher and assistant football coach Richard. Oh, I'm going to make sure that I put their pictures on the screen because even looking at their pictures just breaks my heart. These were members of someone's family. And they left out thinking that they would see their family member when they returned home. And that family member is never going to return home. Mm -mm -mm. We're truly heartbroken. Christina's older sister posted on a GoFundMe page to support the family. He, Kristen's, I'm sorry. He was a very good kid and very sweet and so caring. He was so loved by many. Another verified GoFundMe page was established to help the family of Aspenwall, the football coach, to our beloved defense coordinator, Ricky Aspenwall. We will carry you heavy in our hearts. We love you, coach. A Appalachian football posted on, on X Thursday. Appalachian's home football game Friday has been canceled. The team's opponent posted on Facebook. Um, I-R-I-M-I-E, is it R-M-E? Who was an who was active in her local Romanian community and churches being remembered as a hero, said Father Nicolae Klempas, pastor at St. Mary's Roman Orthodox Church in Decula, Georgia. I'm butchering these names, y'all. I'm so sorry. I mean, no offense. Uh, D-A-C-U-L-A. Dacula? I'm not sure how they pronounce it. We are very sorry that we lost a good soul, Glumpus told CNN. In addition to the victims killed, nine people were injured and hospitalized, authorities said. Those patients are expected to recover and we don't expect any more fatalities at this time. David Phoenix, one of the injured teachers who was shot in the foot and hip, was immediately concerned about his students and colleagues when he woke up from surgery, his daughter said in Facebook post on Wednesday. After waking up, some of the first words out of his mouth is, is everyone else okay? On Thursday, she shared that her father will remain in an intensive care unit for at least another day. There's a pretty long recovery period, but things are looking good, she said. It was not immediately clear whether the killer knew or specifically targeted his victims, the sheriff said. Wednesday was Grace's second day at the school. What? Gray had left class early to go to the counselor's office because he was having anxiety, the sheriff added. Staff alerted police through their ID cards. I told you about that um, because they used the protocols in the system. Uh, they just adopted that safety measure just a week ago with the ID call. Um, the alerts and the buttons were pushed and it ended up helping them out. The website says the tool has dynamic digital mapping, real-time locating capabilities, and easy-to-use wearable panic button for school and district staff, a school visitor management system, and safe uh, reunification capabilities enable educators to plan for and respond faster to emergencies. Several states, including Georgia, have introduced legislation chin for panic alarm systems. Everybody needs to do it, as I said. Okay, the teen suspect, as I said, is um, a young man by the name of Colt Gray. He's in custody and is expected to be tried as an adult. The GBI and Barrow County Sheriff said he faces four counts of felony murder. Uh, he will remain in 
the custody of the Georgia Department of Juveniles until his 17th birthday, even though his case has been moved to the adult system. So they're going to wait until he's 17 to move him in with the adults. Under Georgia law, if a juvenile age 13 to 17 commits a serious crime, they are automatically tried as an adult. He should be tried as one. The weapon used in the shooting was an AR star, a style rifle. Um, authorities have not given any information about the how the weapon and ammunition were obtained. We already know at this point he got it from his dad. But the investigators have spoken to the suspect and have been in touch with his family. It also was not clear when and how the suspect brought the rifle into school. That's the part I don't understand is how did he get it in there? I don't know. Every school is different. I get frustrated sometimes when I go to my son's high school, but it's to the point now where you have to get buzzed in. Even with the students, there's somebody sitting right there as soon as you walk in. They're not even allowed to have certain book bags and things of that nature now. And when you hear stuff like this, I get it. We're still trying to clarify a lot of the timeline from the time that he got here to school Wednesday until the incident. The suspect was previously questioned, as I said, about an online threat to shoot up a middle school. Gray was questioned by law enforcement last year after anonymous tips about online threats to commit a school shooting. That included photos of guns, according to a joint statement from the FBI Atlanta and the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. Jackson County borders uh, Barrow County, where the shooting took place. In May 2023, the Jackson County Sheriff's Office received a tip from the FBI about a threat on a chat platform Discord to shoot up a middle school tomorrow, according to an investigation report obtained through a public school records request. The FBI tip referenced an account created the previous month with an email address that they had associated with Gray. Okay, so that tells us how they figured out that it was Colt who did this. Who made that tip? The tip included photo attachments with the profile name Russian that translate to Adam, the gunman who killed 26 people at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012. Investigators wrote that they interviewed Colt and his father, Colin Gray, at their then home in Jefferson, about 13 miles northeast of Winder in the state in the site of Wednesday school shooting. Colt, who was 13 during the interview, said someone is accusing him of threatening to shoot up a school, stating that he would never say such a thing, even in a joking matter. Colin Gray told investigators he had hunting rifles in the house. Colt is allowed to use them when supervised, but he does not have unfettered access to him to them. OK, so you say that in, in May, but then in December, you buy him his own. Make it make sense. Charge the dad too. Colt assured me that he never made any threats to shoot up any school, Miller wrote. I urged Colin to keep his firearms locked away and advise him to keep Colt out of school until this matter could be resolved. So you thought it was dangerous enough and you thought that it was serious enough that you told him even keep your child out of school, but you allowed the father to keep all his ammo and all those other things. Another investigator wrote that the case would be closed because the allegation that Colt or Colin is the user behind the account that made the threat cannot be substantiated. So they couldn't prove it. At the time, there was no probable cause for arrest or to take any additional law enforcement action. Why does everything have to turn into we can't do anything until something bad happens? Because now here we are. The 13-year-old denied making uh, the threats online. During the course of the investigation, the gaming site threats could not be substantiated. Okay. Uh, before bullets flew at that high school, they had received a phone threat earlier that morning. Um, the phone call warned that there would be shootings at five schools and that the Appalachian school would be the first, but it's still unclear who placed that call. Investigators have not found any evidence of the other schools being targeted, but are pursuing any leads of any potential associates of the shooter that was involved in the incident. The alleged phone threat about five schools raises questions about whether the caller wanted to divert police to other locations prior to an attack. The threat, as we were told, was, th was that there were going to be shootings at five schools, which would have divided police resources evenly between multiple locations. I really don't want to go back. That's what a lot of the students are saying. 
um, they worry about going back to class. I want to go, I don't, wait, I want to go to school and worry about my GPA and what it's going to be this year and focus on my career, but I really don't want to go back. I feel like I shouldn't have to go back to school worrying about dying. And that's how that article ends. This is an ongoing situation, y'all. As I said, sorry it was all over the place. I really had no intentions of coming up here, but this is crazy. And it's sad that once again, innocent lives are lost because of someone's negligence and because of their lack of humanity. And I just want to say rest in peace to the ones that are no longer here. It's sad. I'm going to try to make sure that I look up all their names because it doesn't seem like all of them were mentioned and put, well, no, they were, I did say them. Um, but I want to make sure that I use them as a, um, the thumbnail for this. I don't know what it's going to take, but something has to happen because for us to already be at over 300 shootings in the United States in this year alone, mass shootings, not shootings, mass shootings, multiple. That's ridiculous. You all let me know your thoughts and opinions down below until next time.